All right. Well, some of it might be documented. If you go in front of the camera, we might catch you. Um, huh. Daddy? Yes, yeah, son. What are you doing? Well, I'm about to explain it. So, um, this is really based upon multi-generational agricultural practices. Yeah, the idea is we're going to plant a ulu tree that potentially we may never eat a fruit from. But that if planted right, that not just the present, but the next and the next and the next generation have the opportunity to be sustained. So, um, really, the analogy that I like to use is like commercial chemical fertilizer is like taking your plants to McDonald's. Yeah, you can eat at McDonald's every day if you wanted to. Um, but it might not have the long-term impacts and effects that are going to make you uh, full and have a good life, right? So, um, basically, we making a home-cooked meal for your plants, yeah? And what I found with uh, breadfruit, um, ulu is in the category of plants under the god ku, right? So the four major akua, ku, kane, lono, uh, and kanaloa are essentially... Uh, like a chemical chart mm -hmm. and uh, certain plants align with those right oh. kanaloa is all going to be your ocean oh. stuff they're going to be salt tolerant kane is going to be your very fresh water things that are more delicate lono is like the bananas and the kukui the things that really thrive and do well lono is mulch yeah um ku is a very important plant because the reality, you guys, is that the disconnect with agriculture is we are in the generation that does not actually use human work. Yeah, and I want you to think about every generation before. It doesn't matter where you come from. From all the way in Europe, all the way through Asia, all the way to the Pacific, right? You tell me, how did a million Hawaiians eat 5 to 15 pounds of poi a day? and not have five to 15 pound size turds, right? You got a million of them. We're talking five to 15 million pounds of turds a day. Yet, you go ask any kupuna and they don't tell you, like, well, what do they do with it? So, what we found, and partly this is through research, partly this is through practice, to be honest, partly this is through assumptions. Um, so, I, you can take my word or not. My suggestion is go ahead and test it. But the story of Ku and Ulu is that there was a famine. And Ku told his wife to bury him. And there grew the very first Ulu plant. And it was said that the Ulu is his head. And so, uh, anybody know the term for doodoo in Hawaiian? Ku kai. Yeah? Ku said to bury him. <laughs> bury him. From there, right, and this is important, ulu, coconut, these are food plants. This is actually our traditional way that we mitigated human need. Yeah, the coconut is actually the purest water in the world because it is filtered through the entire tree. Your body essence planted in this area. So now you think, where do coconuts grow? On the beach. What kind of nutrients are there on the beach? Yeah, here's very important to think about. If you see a planted baby coconut, don't dig it out. You might have shitty luck. Right? Because coconuts are a plant that fall. So ideally, a fallen one is going to look real different than a planted one. This is how our ancestors were able to know where not to go. Yeah? Very simple. You go to the beach, there's a buried coconut, go make your own home. So, um, I don't want to say unfortunately, Many people in our community are not actually ready for that. So uh, in lieu of that, we're gonna go to our other ancestor, Kanaloa, and we're gonna basically get the waste from the fishing industry. So we came about four weeks ago. So this is really important. What has happened here, you guys, is this was completely full with ahi scraps. So by us covering it and, and making a liner around it, we created the environment for the black soldier flies to move in, right? And it's important that we're raising black soldier flies, not household flies. Because household flies, they go and land on your food. Soldier flies literally is like that fat of a worm. Like when you see a soldier fly maggot, it is like a house fly, like ramped up. Soldier flies almost need darkness to proliferate. So by putting the cover over it, by burying the sides, 
The same darkness that the house flies are afraid to enter create the perfect environment for the black soldier flies. Now, I can tell that these are soldier flies because it's only been a month and there is nothing left. They completely ate everything that was possible of the fish, basically leaving us with a high concentration of calcium, right? All the nutrients, the protein is converted to nitrogen through the digestive system of the soldier fly, making, right, if we had just planted the tree in fresh fish guts, it would have consumed it differently. You know, this type of practice is like pre-digesting the food. We basically made kimchi. So this is one part of the step. This is the base that we do um, for every long-term tree. Uh, secondly, we are going to follow up with two products. One of which is our farm gold. People laugh when I tell them this, but I literally make a living by selling my pig shit. Okay? <laughs> this bucket uh, is almost $200 full. And mostly cannabis farmers purchase our ingredients. Um, and if you know anything about cannabis, cannabis is the most highly regulated plant in the United States. What we're finding is this type of medicine when you actually make a home cooked meal for your medicine, it not only surpasses all the tests, but the quality and the flavor. So proving that, we said, well, why don't we adopt that to just doing this to all of our food, right? So the farm gold is a combination. So I have a Korean natural farming pig pen. And the pig pen was actually how I remediated 70 years of chemical agriculture on my homestead farm. Um, basically the pen has no smell. The pigs live uh, on two feet of logs and then two feet of mulch. I take all of the nutrients that we make, I spray it onto recycled beer greens. The nutrients that we add to the beer greens is the food of the pigs. We put approximately 50,000 pounds of beer greens a year in the pig pen. So there was approximately 250,000 pounds of beer greens plus Every year we added an eighth of an acre into a 16 by 16 pen. I've spent the last two years mining the pen. Uh, I've raised for my organization almost $100,000 on properly mitigated and managed pig poop. The benefit of that is we probably put out in the community over a million dollars of food. Yeah, every handful of this is probably equal to a five gallon bucket of actual earth product that went into the pen. Uh, the other thing that we add, I emu weekly for the emu char. So the char from the emu is actually worth more to me than the food. So the food, I be free to my kids, I don't charge them. But then <laughs> the char, I mix it with my pig dust. Um, what makes emu char uh, especially important is that the emu has rock dust phosphorus from the stones that are cracking, uh, which makes it bio-readily available. So any rocks that are found uh, in the mixture, the plant can start to consume it. Secondly, banana and tea leaf are where indigenous microbes thrive. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we pull our food out, we reclose it, and we let the microbes that are left inoculate our char. So this is pre-charged biochar mixed in with these nutrients. The last amendment that we have is honestly, this is just mulch from home that we just work on breaking down. So this is also periodically sprayed with our solutions. And all right, the last thing we're gonna do you guys is, and I'll need some help here. Oh, all right, I thought that was one of my kids, but that might be someone else's kid. Okay. Um, so you notice my kids aren't crying because I've threatened them that they might be part of the fertilizer and uh, you give them the <laughs> any strange sound. Um, so what we're gonna do is we are going to make a nutrient solution that we're going to mix on top of all of this stuff. And this is sort of like the icing on the planting cake. Um, so we, I'll go through and basically explain the solution. So uh, cow phosphate is we take Big Island wild beef from Mauna Kea. I broth the bones. I make like fall broth in my emu. And then the next emu, we char the bones and mix it with organic vinegar that we get from Sky Kombucha. 
the vinegar pulls out the calcium phosphate. Now, calcium phosphate is what makes your fruit really starchy and hard at the end. It is something that is important, uh, usually in the finishing stage of fruiting. We have another type of regular water soluble calcium. We actually do a process that almost no one else does. I have access to, to coral. And so we use ocean coral and vinegar and that pulls out the water soluble calcium. This type of calcium helps with the structure of the plant. You see how good and strong the leaves are? This is important during the veg state. We're gonna have a little bit more fish. This is fish amino acid. Um, in this state, it can keep. Every year that this gets older, you get to half the amount that's necessary to use. So right now it's at a thousand to one. Next year, it'll be at 2000 to one. This is really important. Right now, if you're paying attention in agricultural fertilizer prices, in some cases went up as high as 1700%. What? Yeah, I was in Ace Hardware the other day in Kaneohe, because we're gonna get our product in there. And someone heard that and was waiting for me in the parking lot. Do you sell fertilizer? On the way here this morning, I sold $500 worth of fertilizer to this guy. And he's like, oh, expensive. And then we did the full breakdown and it actually is saving him about $200 a year. So the, the two ways that these nutrients work is one, we're gonna do a soil soak, but it can also be used foliar. A five gallon bucket of foliar spray roughly costs about $5. Can you imagine yes. how much plants we can spray? This this thing would cover this whole thing with nutrients. So fish amino acid. This um, honestly microbes they like to have a good time. This is a vodka based tincture that has six different uh, Asian and local uh, ingredients like olena and ginger are the two products that I grow on my farm for this. Um, this product helps to activate the microbes. Right? Mm. I tell people this, you have two parties. One party, there's no alcohol. The other party, there is alcohol. Which party is gonna have a higher chance of having some babies? <laughs> I'm just saying, right? <laughs> when you make it microbes, they can go from one to one million in 11 hours. Give them a little alcohol, <laughs> and this numbers just go through the roof. This is also important as an insecticide and fungicide, mm. right? The alcohol in it, funguses don't like that. Insects are actually, you know, a white fly and other things can actually be remediated through using this product. Our lactic acid bacteria, um, we don't use any rice to gather our microbes. I actually use the leftover water from making poi. Yeah, so kind of the philosophy is the water from the poi has this lactic acid bacteria. I then add it to 10 gallons of milk. The lactic acid eats the lactose in the milk because that is the preferred food, it kills all the other microbes and it is just a bath of lactic acid bacteria. Yes, ma'am. This is what it is, it's indigenous microbes. And I always argue with the Koreans, like how are you gonna find indigenous Hawaiian microbes with rice? You know what I'm saying? Like we catch diabetes with Spam Musubis, right? <laughs> Um, the starch, so banana, breadfruit, taro, sweet potato, and rice, all can work to capture these microbes. These earth-based microbes are already on the skin of the taro. When I cook the taro, we lower the count of the good microbes and kill all of the bad ones. The good ones then transfer from the skin to the starch while I clean it. Then I make the poi, I create the food source for them, I take that water, it's Korean natural farming grow. It's kind of exciting because it's really simple. You don't have to be that smart, you just be consistent. Um, what I found is, right, fish and poi. Yeah, and so we're feeding the land exactly what we know we need. And this is creating cycles within cycles that this is what makes it multi-generational agriculture. And I said, Daniel, well, what kind of farmer are you? I'm the type of farmer that my great, 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 great grandkids will be like, oh my God, I'm so thankful that my great, great, great grandfather went in this direction. Because so after 15 years, your microbiome is complete. 
and you never ever have to add nutrients because the system feeds itself. So can you imagine with Western, right? You go to McDonald's, you just need more nutrients every single day because you're in worse and worse and worse shape. And this one, you get to a point where you rebuild the fungal layer. And once that happens, uh, it's like a supercomputer, yeah? I, I saw this thing, uh, uh, Paul Stamos on Joe Rogan, and they talked about how they took barley and they, they, they put the barley in the exact same locations where all the subway hubs were in Tokyo, Japan, and then they released the fungus in there. And the fungus in the beginning started to grow strangely until it realized it was a system and they actually were able to improve the Japanese rail system by watching fungus grow. These things are smart. They don't need any help. As long as their food, whatever the dominant food is, the predator of that food will be the one that proliferates. Grow um, is actually made Mommy? from fermented ulu juice. So we're gonna be a little bit cannibalistic today. We're gonna feed the ulu the ulu. But when you think about what the ulu trees do, they drop their leaves and their fruit to feed themselves. Yeah? So this is once again another cycle within a cycle, a pattern of reproduction. Uh, and the last one, so cheese, my friends, we actually sell salt water to Hawaiians. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, yeah, you're, you're so good. You can sell ice to Eskimos. It's like, bro, anybody can do that. Can you sell salt water to Hawaiians? Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm proud, but not that proud of it. We actually had to have a big company meeting because people locally would order this, and then I would call them up and yell at them. And then my, my partner's like, dude, you are chasing away our customers. I'm like, I would tell people, do you have any kids? They'd be like, yeah. I'd be like, you can't take your kid to the beach at sunrise to go collect some salt water? <laughs> so this, so these, check this out, right? Have you guys ever been to the ocean first thing in the morning before the sun breaks and then the, the, the color of the water was dark? And then when the sun came up, it cleared out. Well, actually what happened was the ocean microbes, they need indirect UV to feed on. So the moment that there's light in the sky, but the sunshine is not direct, these microbes rush to the surface to eat. Seawater has 86 different minerals in it. And when you catch the top one inch during this period, you collect all the ocean-based deep sea microbes. So yes, $8 bottle of salt water. I am up at 4.30. Okay, at Kualoa, waiting for the 30 minute window. Yes, I am that weirdo with the five gallon water bottle and a malo trying to catch one inch of water off the surface. We're gonna use this combination. We're gonna put it in here. Uh, we're gonna mix all of our stuff in here. Um, we're gonna be very conscious to leave the fish where it's at when we do the mixture. So we're gonna dump this, then we're gonna dump that. Then we're, with the shovel, we're gonna kind of like stir the pot. Then we're gonna take the solutions, throw the solutions in stir it up a little more, make a hole, drop the ulu tree, call it a day. Set it and forget it. Feed your community for the next five generations. Can Any I questions? Question? Uh, oh. Uh, oh, is your seawater solution already diluted? Or? No, yeah, okay. Yeah, you it... Wanna, what, what, to what, uh, what's the ratio for dilution on your... This one can water? actually be up to 30% of your total volume. Um, I sort of deviate a little bit on it. This seawater solution is incredibly important when it comes to flowering and fruiting. Yeah, you got that mango tree that's an eh, the papaya tree that's an eh. You add the fermented fruit juice, the alcohol, seawater. Two days later, juicy. Yeah, so your passion is every bit as impressive as your knowledge. How would we go about getting some of multi-generational agriculture and learning some of this alchemy of what to apply to your product line? I mean, uh, Korean natural farming. So Hawaii is actually the gateway for Korean natural farming into the United States. Uh, there is an organization called CGNF Hawaii, Cho Global Natural Farming. 
I don't know how I got it, but this past year I got elected to the board and now I'm the vice president of this thing and it's like so much more responsibility than I wanted. Um, but they have um, already translated Korean natural farming books. Um, so, you know, I think reading is one. The other part, and I, and I, I don't want to stress this, but I want to say that our solutions are in our waste. Yeah. So if you just take a step back from your own life and you look at, well, what do I really accumulate that I can't, is not, is a waste. And when you can turn that as an input into your system, right? I'm sure everyone's heard the story, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Yeah. Our family value is that our trash is our treasure. Yeah. And when your trash is your treasure, you're already rich. So at home, no joke. I've been collecting humanure for like the past five years. I'm actually about to sell other people's shit. Uh, um, the results that you're gonna get from this are freaking Dad, mind blowing. Yes. You tell Pua he better play nicely, or I'm gonna use that stick on him. Okay. Good job. Good job. We had some excitement this morning. Someone had to get spanking, and so she's holding her spanking stick. So I said it can either be a wand to ward away spankings. Or the one to get spankings with. You decide, little girl. So she seems to be doing well. Um, yeah, so I would say Korean Natural Farming, Google that, YouTube it. There's a guy named Chris Trump. There's a guy named Drake. Um, this type of farming is the only certified USDA pig farms in America that have no cement. So the science was enough for USDA. We tangled with USDA. And today... I mean, that's why we're selling the pig manure, right? If anyone ever grew up next to a pig farm, pig farms usually have a huge sump of nastiness. Yeah, I grew up next to one. So when someone said they can make pigs not smell, I was like, dude, you can lie to anyone else here. But like, I used to blame other kids for me smelling like a pig. Okay? And then they showed me this practice and it got me back into pig farming after I had that promised myself I would never do that to my kids. Now my seven-year-old, right now he's running about 25 pigs at home. Cooney Coonies. We have roasted pig monthly. Like, life is good. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to need some volunteers. What we're going to do for this is this is approximately, for a five-gallon bucket, it's approximately 20 milliliters. So we are going to um, fill it up to about 20. And we're going to put it in here. This one is gonna be about eight milliliters. So we can have maybe one or two volunteers that wanna load these up. When you're done, just put it in the bucket, then we know we put it in there. Um, we have someone that wants to dump this in here and dump that in there. And then I got a couple to do some stirring. Any of you ladies come back from a witch heritage, you're really good at your cauldron, so we're gonna get you to these first. No, we're gonna grow Right in. Let me, let oh me tell you God. guys, Ironic. the natural farmers 200 years ago, they would have burned us at the stake. Oh, real quick for any photos, we're not supposed yep. to have oh, the building. Building. Yeah. All right, hold on, let's. Um, so you guys this is really important right good quality soil right you should be able to ball up but also break up just like oatmeal. yeah this is literally just palm mulch that i've sprayed and clipped and managed for about two years so um take that Mix this up. Yeah, but don't be shy. We can just get in there. Yep. Farm bowl. Yeah, farm bowl. The, the pig and the guinea pig. Pretty much. All right, anyone want to help this gentleman maybe uh, speed up our process? Because this lady, I can tell she's done this before. <laughs> so you're wanting them to put 20... We're going to put 20 milliliters and eight. And we have those four left. The four left so anybody want Actually, I'll do the salt water.
Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. I blame him for everything. Yes. Let me tell you. Not when you're growing up in the 90s and like your dad is like how he is, he hasn't changed and you're trying to be cool at school. <laughs> He's driving around a truck. This is what was the answer written in white paint on top of it. Okay, that was rough. Okay. I was I was like, no dad, you can just drop me off here. Come on. Chiave. Just yes, my dad uh Yeah, you don't even worry about that one a little extra can go in and won't hurt. <laughs> That one is called living, and as you can tell, it is a lot. <laughs> Actually, we're going to double up, so you can do 40. Yeah, yeah, we'll do 40 in that one. That one, that one we're going to go 1 to 500. That one, the living, is actually almost like a magic spray. You have, like, dog poop, fish guts, a stinky trash can. Boom. You can have a pile of, of guts, fish guts, and have the flies flying around it and spray it the flies are like whoa where did our food go because the microbes when they do their work actually change the dynamics the flies are coming to a microbe that is off farting <laughs> so when you put the good microbes in there it eats those microbes there's none of that farting anymore the flies can't tell okay so now we are going to right in here yeah let's give that a little stir yep Perfect, and maybe a little bit, or actually what we'll do with that one is we'll just go back and forth. So, you know, I'm always, um, always interested on different planting styles. What I found out growing up is that my dad actually was trying to teach me a lesson. So I always dug ridiculously deep holes. I didn't realize this till later. The hole doesn't need to be six feet round by six feet deep, okay? But my dad, obviously, I wasn't learning the lesson well enough. Um, as I tell my kids, they might not be smart, that smart, but they'll know how to dig holes. Um, I used to always, growing up as a kid, plant stuff really deep, yeah? And um, I, I didn't fully understand why. I think a part of it is in Waianae, we had such terrible soil, it was so hot and dry, that my dad would have me dig these huge pits, put this plant at the bottom, fill it full of compost and mulch, and then the pit would sort of be like the cauldron that water would keep in it, yeah? And so, um, why and I, the same tree planted in Why and I, and the same one planted in Kahalu'u, the trees will look. The Kahalu'u one will be 40 feet tall. The Why and I one will be like five feet tall. Um, so the soil prep is really important. I think is what I'm trying to say. Here, um, we're gonna plant this semi high, and then you see this dirt right here. Let's put this over, and we are just gonna put this stuff right around that. Yep. And it doesn't look like you need any help, but if you want to hand this off to someone else, don't be shy to ask. Does anybody want to jump in? Yeah, I'm not going there. Okay. Feel free. <laughs> She's been doing everything. <laughs> I'm happy it was the guy with the biggest yeah. muscles that was out there. You know, like, she looked at him, she was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
there's a lot of angry people that I decided to bring this one here. People have been trying to buy all my big blue trees. Like, no, 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 that one's already for somebody. They're like, Bubba, I want that one. That was the biggest one. I, I know. For the, for the girls, you know, like for the kids. <laughs> This is the dirt that was just you dug the hole from you. So kind of what we're doing with the dirt, you guys, is we're camouflaging. Yeah? Who knows? There's pigs, right? The biggest straight up, the biggest problem with planting like this, I've gone into the forest, spent all this time, made it super badass, came back the next day to the ulu tree eaten in half, every hole completely dug out, the freaking pigs ate all my fish. <laughs> Let me tell you, the next batch, I put the fish in it and I went in the tree. I shot four pigs. <laughs> and then those trees had pigs under them. So there is a balance. Look at your ways, look at your challenge. It is your solution. Yeah, and let's um let's kind of build it up to right about here. Yeah. This whole thing, we want to extra mound it because it is gonna break down. Alright, do I have any questions while you guys are or we're watching this handsome guy. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I like guys with shovels, man. It's a good look. <laughs> so eventually when this tree grows up, their goal is to cut back this tree. This isn't a very good tree. So Mike Davis, who is part of her events, who helped with bringing the plants and everything, he um, was, he said that if babies eat these flowers, it's really poisonous. But anyways, as you can see, our our club was here um, in December. Was it December time? I think. We cut back this whole area. It was all of these growing up and they grow so fast and they just sprout and then it's just like crazy. You can see behind it just takes over. So eventually they do want to probably get rid of it. <laughs> Generally speaking, when you look at the forest, yeah, they proliferate and keep an environment for their own invasives to do well. So when I look at this, I perceive all of this as fertilizer. Yeah, none of it is not my friend. I will cut everyone down properly, work with it, right? What people don't realize is Haole Ko has a 20 foot tap root. Yeah, so if you go and you chain up and you pull it up with your tractor, you can pour these solutions down 20 feet. Yeah, you know how deep you gotta go with one machine to get down there and completely denude and ruin the soil? So, um, the last thing you guys, we're gonna circle up real quick and we're just gonna make a, a quick pulley for this because along with the physical nutrients. Uh, it was said of our ancestors, whether heathen or Christian, they just love to pray, so. Johnny, we gotta get you in a circle real quick. We're gonna just do a quick pule and... Uh... In fact, Johnny, would you yeah. honor us with a pule this morning sure. for this tree? Yes. You the, you the right guy. Okay. Mm. Okay, wait, hold on. Hey, yeah. the two guys in the back. Oh, Polina and the Can you guys join our pool? Please, so hey kids, here, come so over here, please. This is important. Yeah. We need all the kid energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. all the kids, please come. Okay, Kiki, with a Kiki. Who's, who's, uh, whose kids is these? A couple of them might be mine, Uncle. I don't know. That's okay. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> Good job, Anna. Yep, you hold hands. Yeah, come. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. We got background music. Yeah, okay. Okay, so as the Kiki yeah. gather, okay, so mahalo everybody for coming out and uh, what do you call, just kind of at your space, just kind of uh, bow your heads. Um, uh, we thank you, Keakua, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for um, just the, the vision of, of Christina, her leadership, and, and Daniel and his expertise. We appreciate Alan being here today, uh, the group, and everybody in this circle, Lord. We ask that you just... Um, uh, be safe today, Lord. The planting of this ulu tree is the beginning. It symbolizes the beginning of a, not only a partnership, Lord, but for the healing and the growth of our keiki, Lord, that uh, reside here at this program. 
Lord, I just ask that you continue to be with each and every one of us. Allow this tree to uh, uh, not only grow, Lord, but to bear fruit in its seasons, Lord, so we can uh, provide, uh, what do you call, nutrients for um, uh, our keiki and our staff that are here. We ask that uh, you bless this partnership for Christina's leadership and, and Equal Rotary, uh, for everybody in the hands that have uh, uh, put to the plow, Lord, to prepare this. So we thank you very much. We thank you for Paulina and her crew and John. And um, let this be a joyous and blessed day. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, Uncle. Yeah, yeah, you are. sunglasses up here on the rock. Thank you. Yep. Does anybody want to squeeze me on? Yeah, too. like Josh and Josiah. Charlie, come closer. Like Should we move this? Yep, move it.